September 2015 was a touch of reality. With a whole year of 200 children attending school for the first time in their lives, the last thing I thought about was that they would be sold for holiday work in Phnom Penh. Emily, our volunteer, who first came to Cambodia on a schoolies trip, had been teaching the grade six girls to read. And the following day, she noticed that the girls had disappeared. So she came and said to me, Tanya, where have the girls gone? A broker had received $20 per girl. 10 girls from our village and 40 girls from the surrounding areas were taken to Phnom Penh to work for the school holidays. We are not talking about 18 years of age here. We're talking about 12 to 14 years of age, the age of your sisters. The big question was, how do we get the girls back before irreparable damage was done to them emotionally, physically, sexually? The first thing that happened was a meeting with the parents. This proved to be rather awkward as the parents claimed that the girls wanted to go to Phnom Penh. And really, of course, this is true as the girls have a huge loyalty to help with the family economics. And rape was not presented on that offering plate. The next thing that happened two weeks later was a meeting with the village chief, the elders, government officials, police, all of my team, and most importantly, all the students from school and the villagers. What followed was this honest two-hour conversation about the risks of working in Phnom Penh unchaperoned. This included stories of individuals that had gone to work there. Two brave women stood up in that meeting and for the first time in their lives told their honest personal opinion and experiences of what happened to them. I believe that they love their daughters like I love my daughters. I believe the family has had to be under such financial pressure to take the risks of sending their girls to work in Phnom Penh. My name is Tanya Lawrence and I co-founded Restore One Charity. You will find me in the middle of Cambodia working in a very small, poor village surrounded in rice paddies. This is a place that is close to my heart. We know that in the developing world, a high school provides freedom through education. A safe holiday job can keep girls in school rather than them ending up in a brothel. Buying fair trade is making sure that money pie is divided just a little bit more evenly. The big question is, how can we do anything to help with that when we're all the way over here in Australia or Brisbane? Life is a series of intersections where our lives get to cross the paths of other humans. At these intersections, you get to choose what happens at that encounter. You get to choose to spend what is in your hands. We call them the three T's. Your time, your treasure, or your talent. By spending these, it will help to reduce that helplessness you feel. <coughs> because let's face it, most people do want to do something to help. It's just so hard to know the best way to get involved. And there's that magical law of the universe that says it comes back to you with a fullness of heart. You may say, oh, Tanya, it's not my problem. Or the problem's too big. But actually, if we fail to do nothing because the problem is too big, then we fail the one. Justice rises to the top 
when we just tackle what is in front of us, or we love the one in front of us, or we share our time, treasure and talent on the ones in front of us. And Martin Seligman is the father of positive psychology and he says, we scientists have found that doing a kindness produces the single most reliable momentary increase in well-being of any exercise we've tested. So in plain English, doing a kindness, a kindness will make you feel good. <coughs> I really see this in the hospital in Phnom Penh. This hospital is for those that have had an accident and are very poor. They will go there to be treated. Some accidents could be a motorbike, could be falling off a construction site, electrocution, or standing on a landmine. This hospital relies on the families to care for the basic needs of the patients, such as washing their bodies, toileting, and feeding them. The system works actually quite well, unless you're the person that doesn't have a family there. So when our teams arrive to Phnom Penh, we actually spend a morning in the hospital. This is not a development project, this is a kindness. And our teams wash the hair of the patients in their beds. Sometimes I think that water gets all over the patients, but nevertheless. They also do hand massages and occasionally give out flowers. What I have noticed is that there is this amazing connection that happens with our team and the patients. Even though we can't speak Khmer, they can't, and the patients can't speak English, there is a love that happens between them. <coughs> that young man on the left, Johnny, he came with the gift of a good voice. And so as he washed the patient's hair, he sang to them. It was a beautiful moment. Society tells us we're not connected. You know, we have our own house, and I, I have my own car, I have my own computer, my own Facebook. Uh, we even have our own happy meals. I like to tell you that my experience tells me we are connected. We are connected deep in our souls where our, we're driven to love the one in front of us. We're driven to want to be loved. We're driven to want our kids to be safe. We're driven, we want to be known. I'd like to challenge you that we are connected globally. Meet Vinuk. I first met Vinuk when I was asked to go and develop a micro-business in the slums of Phnom Penh by giving six sewing machines to make chamois. To be honest, at first I said, no, I don't want to do that, but I was talked into it. Two months later, we had this stockpile of chamois to the roof and the customer backs out of the purchase. Oh! But by then, I had fallen in love with these ladies. I had connected with these ladies and we decided to make something beautiful on those machines. Today, there's 10 ladies that sew on these machines. The women that work with Vinak can care for their kids and sew at the same time. We know this is so important as the children are gonna be safe and not sold or abused while mum is trying to make a living in a factory elsewhere. I have with me one of those bags today. Okay. Here we go. I am strong, I am capable, I am love. When you believe this of yourself, courage becomes stronger than fear and you can risk those unknown intersections in your journey. Each November, we take a team of schoolies to Cambodia. Their lives intersect with the lives of the village halfway around the world. Before they come, each student has to fundraise $1,000 towards just the project. A lot of Australians have assisted with this financial goal. And in my experience, 
Generosity is not relative to wealth, as often it's the poorest people who give the treasure that they have in their hands. Over the years, the schoolies have left gifts, life-changing gifts, such as a primary school. We now have 250 to 300 children attending primary school. They built a home for a family without a home. And what happens if you get a home built by Restore One and their teams? You have to sign a contract that says, I will send my kids to school. Mm -hmm. I will not gamble away my little bit of money I get. And I will use my rice not to make rice wine, but to feed my kids. So we love that. And then, excitingly, a secondary school. And we're up to grade nine at the moment. The end of the year, hopefully grade 10. Meet Nat and Sukun. Sukun Sir. The shorter one. Sukun is our Restore One Asia manager. Nat originally came to Cambodia for just two weeks. He's just finished almost a year working with us. What a champion is Nat. What has Nat bought in his hands? He's a carpenter, and you know what? He's really kind to those around him. What has Nat's year looked like? Well, Nat managed the build of the high school building. He also went to the Thai Myanmar border and connected a water tank and gave water. And if you go to Phnom Penh, you'll find Restore One Cafe with just happens to be what I think the best chips in the world. But out the front, you can now get the best coffees in the world. And he built that for us. Nat is leaving with leaving tangible gifts in Phnom Penh and Cambodia. But he is leaving with a lifelong friend that he made with Sukun. And he's also leaving with that wonderful feeling of a full heart. Steve, I first met Steve when I was at college. Over the last 20 years, we lost touch. But recently, we reconnected and Steve said to me, Tanya, is there something I can do to help restore one? And uh, yes, there was. Steve came over to Cambodia with the schoolies trip. We were thinking at the time of two, two goals. One was the kids in the village had a lot of skin diseases pussy sores and nasty things. The other thing is I was trying to think of what can we use as an encouragement to keep kids coming to school. So, school, so Steve worked on a business making soap in the village. Now this is harder than it seems as there's very little literacy or numeracy skills. There's no power and it's a really dusty environment to work in. He worked alongside our volunteer, Jared to produce an amazing micro-business with the women of the village, making soap out of coconut oil, olive oil and essential oil. It took two days on a tuk-tuk on a major treasure hunt just to source those oils. But what has happened now is that soap is being made in the village. We have noticed... Sorry. What has happened now is soap is being made in the village. It gets sold in Australia, but it's also given out as a reward for school attendance. So maybe if you guys are really good and get good marks in your HSC, we'll give you a few bars of soap, yeah? What, we've, what we're really pleased to report is skin diseases have really almost diminished. There's been a real general health of the students and a really good commitment to returning to class every day. What could this look like for you guys? We love a volunteer. This is where you get to come and share the treasures, that talents that you have in your hands. Talents, if we look up here, teaching coffee, working at the cafe, maybe it's building, maybe it's teaching English, maybe it's working on the computers. I'm not so good at that myself. Your time or treasure, 
your fundraising or treasure could be spent on a school building, teachers' <laughs> wages, or even a home for a family. We believe in freedom and justice. And I want to wish you that and all the happiness and success. Put on that coat of courage and embrace those intersections in your journey. In summary, may your intersections be strong and courageous, carrying that sweet perfume of kindness. Share your wealth and treasure with the poor. Stand up for justice through the purchase of fair trade products. Spend your time doing something worthwhile for someone else. Use your talents to improve the lives of others. Be deliberate about making sweet intersections in your life. And back to the story we started with. Restore One agreed to build a secondary school at the end of that meeting. To be honest, I nearly fainted when they said, we're going to do that. We also agreed to build a micro-business for the girls to work in in the school holidays from the safety of their own homes and villages. Last year, the girls made these amazing hearts here. Here we go. To go on your Christmas trees. There we go. Or they might go on any door in your house, to be honest. And they were sold over here. This next month, let me just throw these out to you guys. That's a love gift from me to you. Here we go. Give them to someone you love. Next month, my good friend Liz, who just happens to have built our website with her gifts, she is going over and she's going to be teaching the girls how to make Christmas stars. And they're going to keep the girls safe during the school holidays in the village. I'm really excited to say that eight of the girls returned to come back to do high school. They are studying hard to get their secondary school education. Education provides freedom. Emily left something behind that was huge after her encounter with the grade six girl. Like a ripple on a pond, you have no idea how far your encounter is going to go. May yours be outrageous, risky, kind and generous.